From Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. We turn now to Egypt. On Tuesday, U.S. Senator Patrick Leahy of Vermont announced plans to block the Obama administration from sending $650 million in military aid to Egypt after an Egyptian court sentenced to death 683 alleged supporters of the Muslim Brotherhood, including the group's spiritual leader, Mohammed Badi. Leahy, who chairs the Senate subcommittee that oversees foreign aid, described the judicial proceedings as a sham trial. It's a uh, flaunting of human rights by the Egyptian government. It's an appalling abuse of the justice system, which are fundamental to any democracy. Nobody, nobody can justify this. It does not show democracy. It shows a dictatorship run amok. It is a total violation of human rights. So I'm not prepared to sign off on the, on the delivery of additional aid for the Egyptian military. I'm not prepared to do that until we see convincing evidence the government is committed to the rule of law. That was Senator Patrick Leahy. His comments came a week after the Obama administration announced it would ease the suspension of military aid to Egypt that followed the overthrow of President Mohamed Morsi last year. On Tuesday, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry held talks with Egyptian Foreign Minister Nabil Fahmi at the State Department. He spoke to reporters after the meeting. We want the interim government to be successful. We are hopeful and, and look for uh, a political process of inclusivity, a constitution uh, impl implemented, uh, which brings people politically to the table and broadens the democratic base of Egypt. Uh, Egypt's constitution is a positive step forward. It has taken steps, and they are moving now to an election. But even as these positive steps have been taken, uh, we all know there have been uh, disturbing decisions within the judicial process, uh, the court system, uh, that have raised serious challenges for all of us. In another controversial move, an Egyptian court has banned the April 6th movement, the pro-democracy group that played a key role in the popular uprising that ousted Hosni Mubarak in 2011. For more, we're joined by two guests. In Cairo, Egypt, we're joined by Democracy Now! correspondent Sharif abdel um, via, um and we're joined by Mohamed Sudan, the foreign relations secretary of the Freedom and Justice Party, the political wing of the Muslim Brotherhood. He's speaking to us from exile in Britain. Um, we welcome you both to Democracy Now! Sharif, uh, give us the lay of the land right now in Egypt. What has taken place? Well, Amy, as you mentioned, a really uh, shocking ruling. In the, in the last five weeks, this uh, same judge has sentenced more than 1,100 people to death, uh, some of the biggest death sentence rulings in world history. And uh, really, uh, cases which lack uh, even the minimum uh, requirements of due process. Uh, this latest case is over 680 people uh, in, uh, in Upper Egypt, in uh, the southern part of the country, sentenced uh, for the killing of a single police officer in the attack on a police station on August 14th following the violent dispersal of uh, two pro-Morsi citizens that left hundreds dead. Uh, only about 60 of those who were uh, in this case were actually uh, arrested. The rest were in absentia under Egyptian law. The, uh, if those people turn themselves in, uh, they should be granted a retrial. So uh, the verdicts are not final. Appeals, uh, they, they are expected to be overturned. But, uh, but, but we, I mean, what this does say about the judiciary, or at least this judge, is that um, more than any other time in recent history, the Egyptian judiciary seems to be a willing partner in state repression, uh, that it's not acting whatsoever as a check on the executive. Uh, if we look in, in history, uh, under Gamal Abdel Nasser, he set up special uh, courts to try dissidents. Even under Mubarak, when uh, they were trying members of the Muslim Brotherhood and other opposition uh, voices, they would have to resort to military courts or exceptional state security 
uh, courts in, in order to get lengthy sentences uh, because the civil judiciary was either letting people go or giving them uh, short uh, or, or uh, not long uh, terms. And uh, we saw uh, uh, in 2005, 2006, an uprising by judges who were protesting uh, electoral fraud, and that uh, helped lay the groundwork for the 2011 uprising. So uh, there has been a semblance of independence in the past, but uh, what we've seen in this latest period, not just these two mass death sentence rulings, but uh, rulings, uh, many rulings against protesters, against uh, dissidents, sentencing uh, people to jail, means that this uh, judiciary has become a willing partner in the state repression. This particular judge has, uh, has, has a reputation for very harsh sentences. He recently sentenced a, a dozen people to 88 years in prison for rioting, and he also acquitted uh, about a dozen police officers for the killing of 17 protesters during the 2011 uprising. And also, if we look at just the sheer uh, number of people in, the, in this latest case, 680 people in this small town, it's almost as if uh, every person knows someone or has an extended family member who has been sentenced to death now. And uh, local papers have reported a mother saying that her son was sentenced to death even though he died three years ago. Uh, a local human rights group, the Init Egyptian Initiative for Personal Rights, documented how two people sentenced to death for this uh, August. 14th uh, riots were actually in Libya at the time. So uh, this really doesn't satisfy even uh, the basic, uh, the basic uh, requirements of due process. And of course, this is the same judge who last month sentenced 529 people to death. Uh, uh, on that same day, uh, the other day, he commuted all but 37 of those uh, death sentences. Uh, that's still a very high number uh, for Egyptian law. If we want to make a comparison, uh, when uh, following the assassination of the Egyptian president, Anwar Sadat, in 1981, five people were sentenced to death. Uh, let's bring in uh, Mohammed Sudan into the conversation, Foreign Relations Secretary of the Freedom and Justice Party, the political wing of the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, could you explain the response of the Muslim Brotherhood to this verdict? Um, I really um, uh, want to assure all what uh, Mr. Sheer, Mr. Sharif just said, uh, but also I want to add something uh, from my perspective about what's going on in the court, that uh, it's only uh, not one judge. There are three judges. And any verdict we should agree the bone for this uh, verdict or a court uh, decision. Uh, I think this guy, the three judges, are under big pressure from the Egyptian intelligence to issue this kind of verdicts. It's unbelievable. Uh, verdict. It's against the humanity. It is something no one can believe in. Uh, the, the judges, they are supreme judges. They are not young judges. They never do something like this. Number one, they release all the, um, the officers which they kill rebels uh, in the uh, revolution of 25th of January uh, 2011. And now they are coming to uh, issue a verdict that uh, uh, more than 700 people sentenced to death and uh, almost 500 people uh, to be sentenced uh, uh, for all life for 25 years just to kill one officer. Uh, it's something unbelievable without any investigation, never giving space or time to the defenders to defend themselves or the lawyers to talk. Here is, it's a, it's a, a political uh, verdict, 100%, coming from the, an order from the, um, the, uh, the, the electric coup authority. Um, it, it's, it's a way away from justice. By these verdicts, it's already killed the justice in Egypt after killing the democracy by Sisi and his group of thugs, which they occupied Egypt um, after they've been free from the military uh, regime for more than 60 years. Uh, now Egypt is under police state. It's under a military state for 100 percent. This is just the beginning. And if the um, international community keeps silent towards all these 
crimes. This is a crime. This is uh, this is not a a, a court. This is um, the, those judges. Even the uh, who the issued this uh, um, unbelievable uh, um, 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 court the verdicts, and there are others we, because they send also how they issued another verdicts like 83 years sentences for some uh, other um, protesters just to protest or or 11 years for young girls uh, uh, 14 years old just to protest at 7 o'clock in the morning. Here is the way which is the, uh, the military coup authority in Egypt after the 3rd of July. They could control the judiciary uh, to do whatever they want to do to, uh, to, bring the, to stop or to scare the protesters in the street, to stop demonstration, to stop protesting against the coup. But we will say that by that way, by this kind of verdicts, you will not stop us to protest against you. We will not squeeze us to go to violence or to commit violence. You will not ever provoke us to go to violence because we have strategy. We have a strategy since 86 years ago to be struggling against the injustice against the unfair trials, the, 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 this crazy uh, verdicts with a peaceful struggling. We Mohammed never did go— Mohammed Sudan, I wanted to ask about um, yes. Mohammed Badi, uh, the spiritual leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, also being sentenced to death. And what's happening uh, with President Morsi right now? Not yet. Not yet. The, the, it is a bending or still the process of uh, the, the, the trial. Is still going on. He has been involved or engaged for many, many times. It's it's a it's a comic. You're saying actually. you're it's saying President comic. Morsi is on trial now. Yeah, he's many trials, not only one. Right, it's so many trials. Mohammed Badi being sentenced uh, to death. Yes, yes. This is what uh, uh, issued yesterday. And Muhammad what is your Badi, response to that? What is uh, Mohammed Badi's significance uh, to the Muslim Brotherhood? He is, he is uh, the, the general guidance of the Muslim Brotherhood in all over the wallet. Um, he said that yesterday, if you kill us, we will not stop. Our people will not stop to protest. And this is what we always mention, that, that if we've been killed, struggling to, to get justice, to get democracy, to get dignity to our people, then it's a very cheap price. We never stop. We never stop.